in just a few moments. But first I'm going to read the scripture to you. This is from Colossians 1, 11 through 18. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints of the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So ends the reading. Mostly I want to focus on the very first line, which says that you are being made strong with all the strength that comes from God's power, and you are being prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. The conversation this morning is about how easy is it to feel prepared to be grateful. Sometimes we come into a place in our lives where it's hard to find a reason to give thanks. It might be because some of your expectations have been overturned. About half of our nation voted one way and half voted the other, and so there was no way that some part of our landscape was not going to feel disenfranchised or not heard or unsettled and uncomfortable with what is coming next. In fact, the vote itself told us that there were people who had been quiet but had not been heard, who needed to be heard, and they voted to be heard. We live not in a world that is separate from the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not at the end of our lives, up in the clouds or somewhere far away. This, here on earth, is the prayer that we pray when we pray the Lord's Prayer for the Kingdom of Heaven to come to us. We are part of it, we are its workers, and we are called to find a way to be grateful and to look for justice and be the light of hope and resilience at all times and in all things. I was looking for a way to talk about gratitude at an interfaith service that's happening later tonight, 6.30, down in Eaton. In particular, I was asked to represent the Native American response to Thanksgiving. And if you stop and you think about what Thanksgiving means to the first people that were here, it's not always a celebration that they're talking about. And I was very fortunate to meet Hawk Henrys, who is an artist in residence for just a few days here in Jackson, at the elementary school. Did anybody get to go here or see Hawk at all this week? You saw him. All right. What does he make? He makes flutes. He makes flutes. 
He's he's from the Nipmuc tribe. He lives in Maine. And I asked him if he would tell me what he thought about Thanksgiving, rather than me trying to assume something that I have no way of assuming or speaking about. And here are the four words that he gave me, and they're very relevant to how any of us might respond to times in our lives when we are called to be grateful, and it might be challenging. The first thing that he said was, well, in my culture, we don't set aside one day for Thanksgiving. Every day is the practice of gratitude. Every meal, every encounter with another person or a living being is a chance to say thank you and to be focused and to be present in that day and in that moment and to see the value in your interactions and your experiences. Daily practice of gratitude can be an incredible way to maintain balance. The second thing he said was that, of course, when we talk about the actual holiday of Thanksgiving, my people do not necessarily remember it as a happy, happy time. That is a myth that we have told ourselves for a very long time. And some of the details about Thanksgiving itself are not really accurately recounted. For instance, the man who was the translator between the Puritans and the Wampanoag tribe, we call him Squanto. But his name is Te Squanto, right? So even his name has been changed through history. And why was he able to speak English and be a translator? because he was taken away on a slaving raid. He was taken to Portugal and eventually ended up in England, and then he ended up back on a ship that was doing exploring here on the coast and was able to return five years later to his people. The Native American people had already encountered many alarming visits from foreigners. So that first sitting down together was not necessarily sure to be peaceful and that they were certain that they had a future together. What he said about that day was that there's more than one part to his story. And we are called to remember the whole story as best we, as we can. None of us know what it was like to sit down at that table together hundreds of years ago, but he's spoken to the descendants of the first peoples who were there, and they tell it differently than we may have heard it in our history books. And that is true in our Bible. There are people's voices that we don't hear even in those stories. That's true in the way that we tell our own tale about what the United States is. A vote, like last week, was a vote for people that were not being heard. We are often telling stories and not hearing the whole thing. So we are invited to listen to the other parts of the story and to try to tell the whole truth or all the parts of the truth and to listen to all the perspectives that may be part of the story. Those are the things that he offered to us when we are thinking about Thanksgiving. Gratitude for survival and gratitude for daily life, but to remember and to be held accountable and to know that there's always more to the story than you first heard, and to be curious and to listen to the other side. That's my thought for today. And now I invite you into conversation, which is really why we are here. It's not for you to listen to me, it's to you listen to each other. You're going to see two conversational prompts in your bulletin. The first one is to share one experience when you struggle to be grateful, and or one when you were surprised to be grateful for something or someone. And then to reflect on how that experience changed or influenced you going forward. The way we do this is that you go ahead and start this conversation as soon as I'm done talking, but make sure that everybody at the table has a chance to speak. So if you've shared a little bit, Please move on to the next person. If you're afraid, if you don't usually speak up, this is an invitation to really try to participate. And if you are a person that often has a lot to say, 
This is a chance to listen. <laughs> and you're going to do this at your own table. You're not doing this across the room. This is only at your own table. And if you have a lot of people, you can even do it one end and the other end. Stick with one conversation. And you're invited for the next 15 minutes to just have that conversation. Feel free. <laughs> so you all have just experienced your first brunch church. Yay! Yay! Okay. All right, and so, um, you know, normally this would be coffee hour, but right now it's potluck hour, so you can mingle as much as you want to, and if you have to head out the door, that's fine too. We've had our benediction, but we are continuing to just put flags on the maps here. If you have a prayer concern globally or in the country, there are tiny little pointer stickies over here. You can even write what, what you're thinking of us praying for, or you can just put it on the map. I want us to continue to be aware of our country and the world and the many ways that we are thinking about and praying for each other. So that's interactive. Feel free to add arrows to the map if you so choose. Woohoo! <laughs>